so I did something today too that I'm waiting to do. I uh, received this little block plane from a friend of mine in Houston, Jim, gave this to me. And I took, uh, took it apart, you know, some rust, I guess, on the sides, but look, it's made in England. This is a Stanley. So I gotta clean up the blade a little bit, but I did sharpen it. You wanna see how sharp it is? Ooh. How do you tell, Mr. Pullian? Well, you do the test here. Let's, oh yeah, there's that, that. Isn't that amazing? Ooh. So, should be sharp enough to play with this. I think. Let's see if this works. Yeah, that's good. Nice shape. Just a little bit. That actually advances the blade for real. That's how you would advance the old one, um, the old wood planes. Tap the front of the back, tap the front to advance the blade, tap the back to retract it. And then you set the Shim. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. Really good. That's really deep now. Oh, look at that. I think. Mm hmm. Sorry, right. I'm gonna have to. I got some more orange paint anyway. Yeah, I can see that here, because here's something. You gotta be cognizant of which way the, the blade, the, the grain is going, the figure. So this figure, this hard grain comes up here. So when I go against that, when it, when I go against that uphill right there, mm -hmm. I get this what's called chatter. I go the other way, I won't get that. But then I might have it you know, somewhere else in there too. This, this is pretty straight grain, so it looks like I'm gonna have to go this direction to get a good plane. Oh yeah, much better. So that's like, oh, that's like so smooth there. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Custom glue scraper right here. Mm. 
They're nice. It's so gonna work. It's so beautiful. Oh, look, I got a little space right here. I can just put that in there. A little bit of filler. Here's something though that a lot of people maybe don't know is that it's traditional as habit to want to set a plane on its side because after you get it sharp, the last thing you want to do is set it on a get in the habit of setting it flat like this. Most of the time, you're going to set it on something that's not going to dull the blade. But if you get in the habit or your helper sees you do it, do this, your helper might not be as cognizant of you as you as to where you're putting the blade, Yeah. right? So the habit is put it on the side to protect the blade, right? So that's that's the, the way that all the old timers can tell you to do it. So. I'll do this. I'll try to see if I can blend it with this. I mean, I've got it so close that just this piece of sandpaper is going to blend it in. Okay. Cool. The other thing, too, the, sand, the sandpaper is going to do is any glue that I have in that joint, it's going to combine with that glue if it's still sticky to help to fill in the space if there's any space. This block of wood will keep the sandpaper flat mm -hmm. and it will help keep the wood flat. There's something here. You see, I've got a couple of. You can see, you'll be able to see really quickly where I sanded now that I put these marks down uh, and what needs to be blended. Ah, so see how. These have disappeared, but I still have these guys. And you can see they're starting to disappear, but that's telling you how much I have left to blend. I got a little to go there. But. You know, and to not accentuate the grain. Okay, so I got a, I got another trick here I'm gonna show you. I got a little, I can see a finger, a fingernail thickness right there. That I'm bumping into, I don't, you know, I don't have it right here really, but here I do. Okay, look, this is where my joint is. You can kind of see the line there. So I'm gonna. That's where, that's where the line needs to be. I'm gonna, I'm gonna scar that with my knife. Yeah. So there we go. I'll do it there, and I'm gonna do it on the other side too. Mm. Oh, I got something else too. I want to share. I'm going to cut these lines and I'm going to share something else. Mm -hmm. Look at this. See those right there? Mm -hmm. I didn't see those before. Those are fungal spores. Those are tiny mushrooms. Okay. And those are waiting for the water to take them down and run them into the door so that they can feed on the wood that's underneath that paint. So it's important that when you're painting a door or a window from the outside, the paint laps up onto the glass. See, see how it's lapped up onto the glass here? I mean, it's a little rough, but it's serving its purpose. It's performing well, right? So the water can run down and over the door. The minute a painter comes in and cuts that paint line, then these fungal spores, where they go? Those guys right there get to wash down, collecting all this dust, and they will get underneath that, trap themselves under there, and they will start a family 
they will build a nation under there and they will feed on the natural resources that you were giving them, right? To build their country. And then when they reach a certain size, you know, they will implode and they will find some other place to go build their country. So, huh, that was a weird analogy, but it worked. I wonder if I can potentially make some rough marks that will imitate the grain going this way. Here, now I can just go this way. It's not going to reach that, that's below. This is a philister plane, also known as a rabbit plane. And the cool thing about a rabbit plane is that the blade here, and then, well, in this one, it can mount in the front, making it what's called a bull nose plane, or back in the middle where it's more, a more traditional rabbit plane. I'm gonna put it in the rabbit plane position. See the cool thing about see the blade going all the way to the edge? See, I can go there, see that? Okay. I can go all the way up to the edge of my line. See that? Blue has dried, and now the rain is coming. Take my screws off. What that say? It says seven and three sixteenths, so I should be at least seven and eight down, actually. Yeah, so let's see. Ah. I am up. All the way at eight. Ha ha ha. Good. So I'm gonna go to I'm gonna put one mark seven and one eighth. The plus sign. Seven and one eighth of the plus sign means a little on the strong side. There, I want to go seven and eight strong, which that's going to be five thirty seconds. I don't talk in thirty seconds. No, I take a long time to talk. I heard the notorious sound of cutting through a nail. And I thought I removed all my screws. But I didn't. Oh, we had our short guy we put in there, didn't we? Yeah. Dang it. Get, dig around it enough to be able to grab it. With my nail pulling pliers. So it's not just grabbing it, it's being able to turn it. I have to get this out because if I don't, I have to do any planing. I can't plane past this screw. Gosh. Oh, look. It's turning. 
got it. Whew. There we go. Pretty tight up here. Oh, it is. Ha. Huh. Well, can you see that, Chris? Yep. Here. Let's see if we can share this stuff. Okay. Look, I've got good space right there. See that? Mm -hmm. It's really rubbing. Yep. It's rubbing right there. So I need to like take about probably a sixteenth and a half, three thirty seconds from. That would be zero in that corner because it's touching, right? No, well, no, it's not zero. But... You can see the scraping. Yeah, I need to take it from here to zero here. I need to take a 330 seconds from this side to nothing over there. And that should get me where I want to be. Pretty good fit. I know it's kind of fun when it fits like that. You just want to kind of want to do it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, see? Seal it in real quick before the rain comes. Oh, the rain's against time. Okay, I'm gonna fix this for sure. Hmm. Mm. There, see, I'm mimicking the direction of the wood with my paint lines. Good. Oh, yeah. There's that scar we made, the intentional scar. It kind of covers up the transition a little bit, see? Feel that right there, see it? I'm not gonna fill it there. See, I that's another thing that people don't know about oil-based primer or just primer in general is it's meant to be a filler, right? That's, it filled my little groove right there. Oil-based primer is also sandable, right? So it's meant to be sanded before you paint. And that's part of the blending process, right? And so you can use oil-based primer as a tool to do that because you're, what you're doing is you're creating the base upon which you can apply your paint right so the better you make your base with your oil-based primer the better your finished coat's gonna look you know and in this case here you know it's just a matter of blending it all together to make it look like it's supposed to Louder. He's amazing. amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. <laughs> Good Good right, let's go. Just a little sand like that. Little brand like that. Brush. Can you see that over Like it, Chris. What do you 
think? Hey, that's nice. Go ahead, Rain, now. Come on, Rain. I dare you. So that's it, man. So that's like, that's about as long as elongating the longer door goes. That's pretty much finishing up the house now. You just got to do the little things. Yeah, I just, yeah, I maybe got to clean the glass. I got to, the hinges are missing a couple of screws. You know, stuff like that. Little stuff. It's, uh, it's been interesting, um, but the end product, it makes me so happy. Um, having windows in the kitchen that function and are beautiful um, is all I've wanted. We've been in a house for 26 years, wow. and we've had some pretty crappy windows. Um, so to be able this fall to open everything up, um, especially when I'm cooking, mm -hmm. um, is what I wanted. And I got exactly what I wanted and then some. And then is there uh, any favorite window you have? Any favorite, uh, you said here in the kitchen kind of, this right here? These two are, the, are my favorites. Um, the ones in the living room are beautiful also. The little side windows yeah. that you know most people in bungalows have. Um, but we've never been able to open these um, without having every bug in Tampa come in. So now we've got screens on these windows, like the ones in the kitchen. Okay. So we'll be able to have none of these windows function, none of them. Um, yeah. And none of them have screens. So to be able to open up uh, this house in the fall and have a cross breeze like they did maybe in 1923 yeah. uh, is uh, very exciting. <laughs> and to have this house back to more of an original 1923 window uh, again, I'm, I'm super excited. Very, very happy. The other things that we did that um, was just a little extra is that we put matching um, window stop adjusters. These are the window stop. And what the reason we did this is so that in the future when somebody needs to maintain these or piece of glass gets broken from a lawnmower or, or whatever it might be, that these will be able to unscrew and come off and you can get the sash out okay. so that you can service it. You know, and that's, and the other thing too is, I don't think this will ever happen, but if there's a need to tighten it, you can tighten it too, because there's, there's play in, in there. That equal the phone calls to you. Yeah. I'm not leaving any Yeah, well, I mean, that's what, that's what I'm saying, but that's, but that's, that's future person, right? Right. You know, it's like whenever you know, whenever somebody else has this house in the future, that will be there as a feature that hopefully they'll still somebody will still know about. Anyway, that's that's what that is, and they're fully weather stripped, right? So let's see. Let's see if this one still opens, right? Mm -hmm. okay. See, the spring bronze weather stripping there on the top one. Yeah. It is nice too. So this is just everything that could be. I'm very pleased. 